it's become a bit clunky and like yeah okay let's uh let's start the demo that's uh, sorry awesome. sorry for the waste of time no problem at all um so just before I start, a bit of a disclaimer. Uh, we shipped a couple new features today and they are acting up a little bit. Um, for example, if you can see over here, we have like a double category thing. We just launched kind of grouping channels. And so that's acting a little bit buggy today. Um, but uh, you know, most of the stuff worked fine uh, and that's what matters. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and can we just take you through what I have set up over here. You've already seen this before. I set up a Realm. Uh, it's for it's for my open source project fleet. Um, and I've connected GitHub, Vercel, Figma, and Linear into my workspace. Um, and I've also linked the fleet repository as usual. And I've also invited a teammate. His name is Reese, and he's gonna be helping me kind of demo the features today. Okay. Um and that's kind of basically where we're starting. Um, and so the first thing I just want to do is I want to show you um, you know, a conversation that Reese and I are having, uh, and how Dimension can essentially jump in and speed up things. Um, and so over here, Reese is just talking about the implementation of a change log feature in which, you know, when when we push a new version of Dimension, it would kind of add like a change log to their inbox. Uh, and he's asking me kind of whether or not we obviously want to have that before launch. Um, and so, you know, I mentioned it should be using Markdown, uh, it should have the author, date published, et cetera, right? Um, and so the first thing I just want to show you is uh, a handy feature that we built. And to be completely honest with you, this is not the best use case. Um, and so what I'm going to do is actually able to summarize messages uh, using AI directly on Dimension. And this is extremely useful. And we, we automatically actually do this for uh, either group channels that you open that have 10 or more unread messages or threads that you just haven't interacted with. And so essentially, you know, while it would typically automatically pop up, uh, I, can, I can actually manually show you how the demo, uh, like how the feature works. I'm going to go ahead and hit get summary. And we have, you know, a pretty short summary. Obviously in this case, there are just a few messages. So the summary is, you know, obviously not as succinct as it would be or not as helpful as it would be. But as I mentioned for longer threads and, and like a long list of messages, this is extremely useful. Just gives us a quick refresh. Uh, doesn't reset the colors for some reason. We're, we're working on that. Um, and so um, over here, um, kind of Reese is waiting on me sending him a design for the change log feature. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to Figma. I'm gonna copy a link to a design and just hit paste. And you can see that instantly uh, it's, it's going it's, it's going to go ahead and generate an embed for this specific frame that I selected as soon as I pasted it. Um, and essentially you can see over here that uh, we said, hey, it looks great. We should, we, we should kind of start building this, right? Um, and so this is uh, something called, so these two things, the, the, these, these are things you see here, is something we call one-click actions. Um, and so I'm not sure if I've shown you this before, but essentially uh, we we aim to encapsulate all the flows that, that, that kind of uh, emerge from a chat communication style to a different tool. And we aim to essentially eradicate kind of any context switching that's taking place in that workflow. And so essentially, uh, if you can see over here, it's saying, hey, do you want to create an issue on linear or, do you, or like, do you want to create an issue on dimension? I'm going to go ahead and create an issue on dimension over here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And we have AI that essentially takes the context of your previous Amazing. messages and automatically writes a task description and a title. Keep in mind, we're still working on the prompts. It's a little bit verbose right now, but essentially, you know, kind of the idea is to remove any context switching and boom, I can go ahead and kind of select a team that I want to put this under. Ooh, that's a bit weird. I don't know why it's, it's acting up. Just give me a sec. Go ahead and double check the teams. Oh yeah, I haven't created a team. That's, that's just me being silly. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I, I don't know, like just give it a custom icon, uh, F R N D hit next invite Reese, uh, hit enter and go ahead and create it. Boom. That's done. That's my bad. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and get this back up and running, uh, create issue on dimension. It's going to write up everything again. And this time I can actually select a team to put this under. And in that time, I'm actually going to show you, um, how this obviously works, uh, with real time sync on GitHub. Just give me a sec. Sorry. Um, here we go. Oh, ah, okay, fine. Look it up. So, um, no, oh, one sec. There we go. Okay. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, um, I mistyped front end. That's my bad. But essentially, uh, you can see over here that I that I can assign someone if I want to. I obviously select which repository this specific task fall under uh, falls under. And I can also select a project or a cycle. We actually recently shipped cycles, which is obviously kind of important for teams who want to have stuff like sprints. And so we sh we, we ship that, and you know we also ship stuff like insights that, that give you some context on you know how many tasks your team completed. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and hit create. 
Um, and this is essentially going to go ahead and create the issue on GitHub and also add it to dimension. And you can see over here that it's been created and it automatically takes me to that issue page. And so what I can do over here is, I mean, I can go ahead. And so I, I want to let Reese know that I've, I've, I've created this, right? And so what I can do is we just added a feature called share. And what it can do is it can share content. Uh, it, it can share any content on any page with anyone. And so what I can do is I can just go ahead and hit S. And I can hover over this specific thing that I want to share, uh, click on it, and I can just go ahead and say, hey, I want to share this with Reese. Hit enter, and I, I, I and I've instantly shared that. Um, and so what you can see over here is that, I mean, if I just go back, I think you've already seen this before. We have enter and GitHub sync. It shouldn't be anything too special. Um, and yep. if I just go ahead and quickly refresh this, um, you can see over here that it's been created. It's been assigned with the right tags. Um, and uh, any second now, Reese is going to go ahead and comment. And if I switch back, uh, you should see that it updates in real time. Um, and so that's, that's something we have. And we'll also ship stuff like, you know, blocking tasks and parent tasks and subtasks as well, which is pretty important for uh, extensive collaboration in a team. Um, and so, I mean, I've already showed you kind of like the the roadmap and, and timeline stuff we have. So I'm not going to spend time on that. I'm going to just, just go back to chat. Um, and before I actually show you um, kind of uh, some of our code features, which I think I probably would have shown you before as well, what I actually want to show you is uh, how we've made it extremely easy to reference any issue that's on linear in a, a kind of directly in dimension. And so what I do is I type in the name of the of, of the team on linear, like FRND, and I can go ahead and reference any of these issues. For example, if I want to kind of maybe say create real time uh, a real time inbox system, right? You can go ahead and see that I can share this. And uh, this is all that uh, kind of this has been shared automatically in chat. And what I can do is I can go ahead and click on this, and I get a, a peak view uh, through which I can directly edit everything I need to actually edit directly from Dimension without having to context switch uh, and without having to have linear open on a different tab, right? So I, and, and, and you know I can change the priority, the status, signee, anything, and I can even add a comment. And so um, this is like a really, really easy way to re like reference issues. I can also actually manually just type in FRND 118 and that'll also fetch that specific issue. But obviously, you know, it's not realistic to expect an engineer to kind of obviously remember the exact ID of the issue on the workspace. Um, and so that's one cool thing that we ship just to make it extremely easy. Uh, I think I've already shown you this before, but kind of just, just bring it up again. Um, we have, you know, um, diffing uh, for code blocks can go ahead and click on this. I don't recommend changes. You can go ahead and see that uh, I made some specific changes. Um, and so I think I've already shown you, you know, slash commands that we have as well. Um, I can go ahead and do slash meet. And, you know, that's pretty much instant to kind of go ahead and create a meeting link and, and join a meeting. And what we can also do, and so this is something I think we've shipped, um, is you can actually join a meeting directly from Dimension. And so what you can do over here is on the bottom left, we have uh, we have just this toggle. You uh, you just toggle it and you're in a meeting. Um, and what we've done is we've essentially uh, automatically created a thread uh, for for every meeting you join in Dimension. And so anyone who kind of wants to be kind of synced up on the discussions or the messages that happen in that specific thread that can be referenced uh, in the future. And we can also have AI to automatically summarize kind of all the content and all the kind of discussions that have happened in a specific call. Uh, and so we made it extremely easy to kind of call and collaborate on the platform. Um, I believe I already showed you the de deployments. Uh, one thing that we've actually worked on on deployments is shipping a, a linear integration. This is not actually on our prod app yet, but you know, we've basically figured out how to kind of render all the stuff from the railway API. And so we're currently working on it. Um, and so that's going to kind of drop very, very soon. But what we've actually done also since last time is had better support for uh, for tools like Marcel um, in the sense of, you know, if I go ahead and go to uh, to kind of deployments, for example, uh, you, you can actually see that we you, you can also see the environment variables that we have. Uh, you know, you can go ahead and manage your settings over here as well. You can go ahead and also click on a deployment and you can also obviously see the build logs. You can see the function logs as well. And so, you know, we're basically made like a kind of like an end-to-end, -end. You, know, you can access anything you can access on Marcel directly from Dimension. Um, and one really, really cool thing I actually want to show you is context awareness. And so I, I think this actually should be pretty self-explanatory. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and click on a, on a specific field deployment, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And this is still a work in progress. It might or might not work. It's a bit, it's a bit buggy right now. But essentially, um, ooh, one second. I think if I just go ahead and give this a quick refresh. Here we go. 
There we go. Okay. So you can see that this is a failed deployment. Uh, there's a bunch of kind of specific steps that failed, right? And so uh, typically what happens, you know, in the traditional engineering workflow is that, you know, an engineer goes ahead and kind of pastes a link to the Vercel build saying that, hey, you know, this failed, can we debug it, right? And Or like, what's the reason for it? Did anyone of you push a change that kind of broke the pipeline, right? And so what I can do is I can go ahead and switch back to chat. And you can see over here that it's automatically able to understand that, hey, you were previously looking at a page that had failed build logs and you wanna share that build with Reese. And I'm gonna go ahead and say send to Reese Martin. And if you can see over here, it automatically attaches the build logs that failed. And so essentially I've gone from a deployments page um, to chat and it's automatically saying, hey, do you wanna share this, this information? Cause it's likely relevant for your team. Um, it's worth noting that in that time of also ship stuff, like searching, right? Uh, we've shipped like a bunch of other stuff that honestly, it's it's probably going to take me a lot, uh, like a lot of time to demo because I I mean we have cycles uh, and we have a lot of other stuff. So, uh, but overall, you know, this is kind of where the platform is at today, and we kind of plan to launch, um, you know, end of next week. We have integrated kind of analytics end to end, so we're able to understand how users are using Dimension and what features they're using the most, which is obviously critical when you're launching a private beta. And we also have kind of a feedback button through which you can like take screenshots and stuff and essentially, you know, attach feedback um, and we get kind of browser logs and stuff. It's powered by Marco, which is what we kind of chose to use for this. But yeah, kind of that's in general what we've shipped over the past few months. And yeah, that's plus the desktop app. In fact, I can actually show you the Dimension desktop app. There's a few rough edges here and there, Ooh. but you know, uh, if I go ahead and show you, this is pretty much, you know, our, our desktop app. We, we'd love to kind of make it native in the future because, uh, you know, obviously Electron's not ideal, but, you know, for now uh, it works. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what we ship with the desktop app. And we also have uh, an Expo powered uh, kind of mobile app that we're, and that we're also working on. Just a few UI refinements on that front. And, you know, pretty much where I, I believe we'd be ready for launch. So what uh, what are you waiting for for launch again? So essentially, um, it's a few things. So it's so one thing is migration tools. Uh, we just added the, the capability for us to mirror your channel structure on Slack or Discord uh, instantly into Dimension. Um, and so that removes friction on migration. And ideally, we'd also like to work on importing your messages from Slack into Dimension. So you, know, you don't actually lose history or data when you're switching between uh, Slack to Dimension, for example. Um, and we're also actually working on, oh, uh, I forgot to show you the command K. We are actually working on a command K menu, obviously for you know nice navigation. Um, and so if I just pull up a list of stuff that I actually wanted to show you today, um, we're also actually working on uh, on kind of our inbox. It isn't completely functional yet. And so we're <laughs> working on, on kind of it sending you events in real time. You know, this person assigned you to this issue, et cetera, right? So working on uh, to kind of making that happen. Oh, we also launched a, a Spotify integration because, you know, uh, one thing that we noticed is like, like a lot of the teams that, uh, that, that, that actually were onboarding really, really love the fact that Discord is, you know, a fun uh, work vibe. And, you know, kind of one of our goals with Dimension is to make collaboration fun, which is why kind of, if you notice our kind of our fonts and everything are not corporate, right? You know, they're a bit more fun. Um, and so, you know, people kind of, we, we spoke to people and, you know, they, I mean, kind of, we asked them, what do you love most about Discord that kind of makes it a, a nice working experience and, you know, uh, having a Spotify integration of kind of being able to join people and listen with them, um, you know, is something that people liked, especially kind of younger teams uh, and smaller teams kind of building. Um, and so we just launched that. It was like a two day project. We pretty much launched that. We also launched automatic time zone conversion. And if someone says, you know, let's talk 8 a.m. my time, it's going to automatically convert that to your time. Um, and so kind of there's no time zone conversion that has to be done in that process, which can be pretty annoying. Uh, we also launched user profiles, which is again, you know, you can click on someone's profile, you can add a status. Uh, we also launched statuses like, you know, like online, DND, offline, you know, for, for notifications, for yeah. a more sophisticated notification system. And, um, and yeah, I mean, like kind of, uh, that's pretty much what we've been working on. And um, yeah, that's kind of what we're also waiting on. Oh, we, we also launched GIFs and custom emojis. Uh, so, you know, people can add in fun emojis to your uh, to your workspace. And you can also obviously add GIFs, which I personally can't live, with, uh, can't live without. Yeah, uh, me, me too. Uh, man, um, okay. So you said like we also launched uh, about uh, 18 times just now. <laughs> and um, you need to tighten up that kind of storytelling. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you ever, uh, are, you, are you a fan of South Park? Uh, um, sorry? 
South Park, the cartoon. Oh no, I actually haven't heard of it. Oh okay. Um. Anyway, it, uh, one one very common piece of writing advice is that things that happen in sequence should not be like and then something happened and then something happened and then something happened, uh, because that is a very loose connection of features with no logical sequencing or tie mm -hmm. or common common theme. Uh, one thing that you would like to construct is just try to thread an overall theme of what does dimension stand for. Right. Uh, yes. Why they keep keep coming back to uh, a general point of view that you have on the way that people work? It is not a loose group of features. It is an opinionated point of view on like, what is what is wrong in the world that doesn't exist that you have to build this today. Therefore, anyone who agrees with you should try it out. Um, uh, and so, obviously, uh, this is this is a very rough thing. You haven't launched yet, uh, but I would encourage you to to take the time between now and when you launch to think about how you story tell because um, the Absolutely. way that you present it to the world. Obviously, this is something I specialize in, so I always think I think this is very important. Right? Uh, but you already Absolutely. did the hard part, which is which is uh, engineering. Um, and uh, that's that's super useful. I also like that the product taste, right? Like you use yourself as a test. Like what what would you expect as a daily active user, right? uh, which is great. Like you use dimension to build dimension, right? So obviously, um, obviously all this is great. Uh, and then the last thought that I had was, man, um, I would like some of these features for the next app that I build, because what you're essentially building is kind of like a super graph or like kind of social network on top of a of on top of an app. And like, it's great for dimension. Dimension has a great set of features for, for this, but what if I could, you know, lift and lift and shift that set of features to my next app and my next app and my next app. Cause every app needs email or, or like DMs or like notifications or, you know, um, so I don't want to like make you pivot or anything, but um, I think that uh, th there's a world in which you sell the things that you've been building rather than just the app. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, congrats. Uh, this is this is a really this is coming along really nicely. Uh, you've, you've incorporated AI really well, um, and uh, I don't know. I, I think I think this is uh, this is coming along. When, when are you aiming for launch? So around end of next week is when we're trying to launch. Holy shit. Okay. Um, all right. Um, well, I mean, yeah. Keep me posted on on when that is, and uh, I'd be happy to. Um, help amplify it, but also I think um, this is where I always view like DevRel as like re really important, right? Like um, holding the message that you want to deliver to people, like uh, holding the onboarding experience, so that when you get people, you also don't lose them right, right away. Yes. Uh, yes. First, first impressions, first impressions really count. Uh, but also don't get stuck in paralysis, right? Like you set yourself a date of next week. Okay, fine. Like you know, um, don't move that because. Launching is just step one of a much longer journey. Like most of the Absolutely. things that you use today, most of the things that you use today, you don't remember their launch because it actually doesn't matter that much. Like it's more important that you build good stuff. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, you know, I'll definitely keep in mind, you know, like the, the storytelling aspect. And also you mentioned an, an, a great onboarding experience that's been actually kind of at the core of, of kind of what we're trying to do. And we've like, we've designed like an onboarding flow in which, you know, I get them on a call directly on dimension, Show them around the platforms, you know, obviously, uh, of like a fantastic uh, uh, boarding experience. Can I show you that's... Walnut? Yeah. Uh, you may not need to get people on a call. Okay. Uh, have you tried Walnut? Uh, um, no, actually. So, yeah, I, I, I don't expect you to. <laughs> uh, give me one second. Let me, let me try to bring this up. So Walnut is a way where you can put, like record yourself doing a walkthrough. Or you, you can try, it's like kind of loom, but self-guided loom uh, mm -hmm. with, with branches. Um, so you, you know about Loom, you can you can record yes, um, yourself doing doing a video. I think honestly, I think Loom is underrated. Like I I, I would strongly recommend like a two minute Loom. Like hey, I'm the founder of Dimension. This is why this is why I'm doing this. Blah blah. blah. You know this is what what we built. Uh, start here. You know two minute thing. Yes. But then then I recently came across Walnut, right? That actually captures every frame of your app as like kind of like a static image. Um, but then it lets you, it lets an, you know, your uh, market marketing managers or sales managers uh, do walkthroughs, right? Um, of like of, of of the app, so you just kind of click and walk through and like see the experience, uh, see some notes, uh, and I'm like, I was just really really impressed that like this is possible. It, it's the full app. It's it's exactly what it looks like to be in the app. 
Sorry, I, I think you might be sharing something different. Am I sharing my screen? Yeah. But uh, I, what I are you seeing right see, now? I can see Hacker News. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, <laughs> no problem. Are you, are, you seeing the, are you seeing the horizontal screen right now? Yes, I can see this, yes. <laughs> okay, well, let me start over again. So Walnut, when you, <laughs> when you land, it, it lands and it says welcome, but you're you kind of dropped into the screen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you kind of click through and you're kind of self-guided. So it's like, it's saving your time as a founder of like, hey, like here's the basic demo, here's what we do. If you're interested, then we'll pause for a call. Right, so so I can click to get a demo. Ah, okay. Um, or I can continue exploring by myself if I don't want to talk to a human being. Right, some people just don't want to talk to a human being. Absolutely, um, no. I I kind of see what you're saying about you know self guided. That's actually something we also have. Like you know, it just like hovers over like oh, okay. kind of, kind of, you want to press and it kind of gives you like a description very similar to this. Um, and yeah. so you know, I I think this is uh kind of we can we can actually I think we can improve it a little bit more. But you know, we okay. have something that is somewhere kind of along those lines. Um, I actually also wanted to kind of discuss one more thing with you is also kind of our next fundraise, um, since kind of right now, again, um, uh, kind of I've started trying to raise capital and, um, you know, it's, um, it's important for us to be able to, uh, start early so we can obviously close around, uh, and focus on building, expanding the team, building more integrations, et cetera. Right. Um, and so, you know, I think, uh, while kind of, I'm currently trying to hold off on talking to venture capital funds. Um, until we have our private beta out, because I mean, I, I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, hey, it sounds great. Let, kind of let us know once the private beta is out and what the traction is. Um, and so kind of I I know what to expect in that sense. But I think for for angel investors, I think that there's like a lot more feedback that we can kind of get on like a personal level. I, I feel like angel investors obviously are more uh, kind of hands on in terms of how they engage, at least kind of in terms of feedback uh, and what they think about the product. Um, and so, you know, if you uh, kind of obviously, I mean, I know you know a ton of people, but if you think um, I, I should speak to anyone in specific, uh, kind of like potentially founders of maybe some of the integrations we're integrating with, for example, uh, kind of uh, who are like kind of engineering leaders or, you know, obviously CEOs, um, you know, I, I mean, I would really, really appreciate kind of any introductions to angel investors who I should talk to, kind of obviously show dimension. And I feel like that would also be a strong foundation for our round if we're able to get a few angel investors who really love the product. Um, so you want to, are you, are you sure that you want to go angels first and then VC? Like how, yeah. how strong of an opinion is this? Okay. It's a very strong opinion. Um, okay. I'm pretty okay. positive. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, sure. I can, I can help you do that. Um, I, I would also say, uh, I do have a scout fund now. I did not have this when, when I first talked to you, but I do have a scout fund now and I can invest out of that scout fund. Uh, you're, you're one of the more, uh, persistent and high quality, uh, founders that I've ever met. Um, so uh, happy to support you in that in that way. Thank you so much. Um, uh, obviously, I, I would like to know like fundraising details and and all that. Uh, whenever you're Absolutely. ready to share that. Um, and then angels angels wise, like I have an informal list. Uh, but usually, basically, I it's just uh this list and anyone anyone on my list of angels. Uh, so I have this like, sort of angels list, right? Um, Def uh Def Souls angels list. I put it in the Zoom chat. Um, anyone yes. on my list of angels has basically opted in to be called DM'd by you. Um, so just, just reach out. Um, also check the PRs because I haven't groomed the PRs in a while. Uh, so there's some people who like signed up that I haven't put uh, accepted the, the PR yet. Um, but yeah, all of them are, um, they're happy to help you. And um, whenever you're ready, uh, you know, I, personally, I think that you're ready to talk to some of the seed stage VCs that I know. Uh, and then whenever you want to kick off that process, um, uh, just let me know and I can put, put you in charge of like Sequoia, Amplify, um, um, Andrews and Horowitz, that kind of stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, no, my pleasure. I, I mean, it's it's just been amazing to see you uh, grow and um, hopefully you're also keeping Tom Preston in the loop because obviously Absolutely, he, has yeah. a big, he, has a, he has a bigger network than I do. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it and take care. See you next time. All right. See you. All right. See you. Bye.